How's it going folks? Toad here with VisorDown.com and we are here for a quick review of the Yamaha XSR700. So this is the X-Tribute. So it's basically uh, an XSR700 and it is decked out as a homage to the 1980s uh, motocross bike which was of course the, uh, the XT500 um, uh, dirt bike. So just very quickly, what is it? In a nutshell, it is a kind of a custom variant of the XSR, which is already a custom variant of the MT-07. It uses the MT-07 engine, uh, but the frame, subframe, um, kind of vary uh, slightly in terms of you can see it, and there's a, a different hoop around the back of the, uh, the seat. Um, we've got dirt-inspired Pirelli MT-60 tyres on there. Well, I wouldn't really call them off-road tyres. They're more meant to look like a flat-track tyre. Um, but they're fairly good on the road. Um, I'll come along to that a little bit later. Um, so the price for this is 7799 and they are available now. Um, so let's have a look at it in a little bit more detail. So first and foremost, the engine. So like I said, it's the 689cc unit out of the uh, MT-07. And there really has been nothing done to it. The only thing that the uh, X-Tribute gets that the normal XSR doesn't get is it's got this rather slinky looking upswept exhaust where the uh, catalytic converter and collector box are, are underneath the engine as normal. But then you've got a link, a tall link pipe that brings the exhaust right up along the uh, right hand side of the seat. So it's exiting just by your right ear. Um, first off, the sound of this thing is really, really sweet sound. It's got the 270 degree fire in order engine. So the crank pins are at 270 degrees and it gives it a really nice like offbeat thrum. Um, and then with the Akrapovic exhaust system as well, it just makes it sound so, so meaty and so chunky. It actually does sound like a dirt bike, like an old crosser, like a four stroke crosser, which is great. I think it's awesome. And it also makes loads of lovely little sort of pops and bangs on the downshifts and stuff properly sweet sounding. Um, it's not terribly powerful. So it's about 75 horsepower. So if you were a newly qualified hipster, cool motorcyclist and you're looking for something it's probably quite a good option right there um, and it's got 50 foot pound of torque as well it's a it's a very punchy engine parallel twins can be a little bit uh, tedious a little bit boring but with the 270 degree firing order and the work that um, Yamaha have put into the into the engine on this thing and it is a really really good unit and it's very tractable um, it doesn't behave like a twin it doesn't sound like a twin and it doesn't go like a twin either it's really really eager to rev it's just a it's a phenomenal little bit of kit um, and I've always liked it I had an, uh, a Tracer 700 I won't say MT-07 Tracer there but yeah I had a Tracer 700 for a year and although that's just a touring sort of upright touring commuter style bike it's still you, you fall in love with the engine the first time you ride it it's just a really really great little unit um so i've been riding this thing for about sort of two or three weeks now and i don't seem to be able to get any less than about 60 miles per gallon it's just so frugal it just sips sips petrol it doesn't gulp it and you can ride it like an absolute dick and still return 60 miles to the gallon so it is really really frugal i mean uh, a trip to london and i'll only need a splash and dash when i'm getting back up towards uh sort of banbury way uh, from coventry to london so yeah i'll ride to london come back up and i'll splash and dash at, at banbury and then get on my way again so yeah it is very very frugal so it is MT-07 derived suspension, which everyone loves the MT-07 because it's so bonkers to ride. But one of the reasons it is a bit bonkers to ride is because it's kind of a little bit underdamped and the suspension's probably a little bit old school. It is designed to keep the cost down. That's the only thing. I mean, we've got sort of right way up forks with the nice retro looking fork gaiters on there. Uh, zero adjustment. You know, it is what it is. You've got to just live with it. And you've got a uh, quite an old school sort of just normal shock absorber on the rear with just manual preload adjustment on the click um it kind of does feel a little bit under damped but for this kind of bike you you don't want it rock hard it is quite soft and it does dive quite a lot on the brakes but it's very it's very predictable um you, it doesn't there are no surprises in there whatsoever it does corner quite well bumps mid corner will sort of start to unsettle it and i have noticed that if you go above motorway speeds quite a lot above motorway speeds it will tend to start to get a bit of a speed wobble on and if you back off it it does start to build and build and build like there's some sort of tension in the bike somewhere that's trying to find a way out i haven't quite put my finger on it whether or not it's the suspension or the tires or the tires and the suspension together causing causing that issue um so you've got 130 mil of travel on the front and 130 mil of travel on the rear don't let its off-road appearance 
fool you into thinking that it is an off-road bike. It's not really. It's basically the same as an XSR 700 with some semi-knobbly flat track style tyres on it. You can take it off-road if it was a, a little dirty, dusty track such as this little uh, uh, byway that I'm on here. Then, yeah, you can take it up it but if you go anywhere near any any mud or anything it's just gonna it's just gonna get itself stuck because it's it's not really designed for that so we've got a very simple back to basic style braking system really there's no imu there's no you know it's just abs it's not switchable uh it's not too intrusive though which is quite nice uh you do hear the front tires sort of chirp a little bit as the the uh sort of the 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 nobbles on the tire sort of move around and are really really hard braking uh you've got sort of the yamaha blue spot style brake caliper on the front which i think is a sumitomo item um and you've got a 282 millimeter disc and there's a single uh two piston sliding caliper uh nissin jobby on the rear all the brakes feel really nice they've got you know there's a great nice progressive feeling at the lever there's not tons of bite which do you really need it on a bike like this I do quite like the back brake. Um, it's nice and direct and it, it's really positive feeling. A lot of back brakes on mon bikes, they tend to just feel like you're pushing a spoon through a bowl of porridge, which I'm not really into. Um, and yeah, it's, it's, the, the braking system is adequate, I would say. And if you're a new rider jumping off a 125 or off a scooter and, and moving up and doing your full bike test and then getting on one of these, it's going to feel absolutely brilliant. It kind of it never it never fails to make me smile um, on a, the roads around here where I've been riding today that you can probably see on the video now. It just comes into its own, and as long as you don't push it too much and you don't take it too far outside of its comfort zone, it will never fail to entertain you. It is a little bit wayward in the corners uh, in terms of if you try and just fling it on its ear and then get on the gas too early it, it, kind of the suspension doesn't like it and the tires start to complain but if you just go use the slow in fast out approach and you just kind of take it easy it's not a race bike it's not a bike for getting your knee down i mean look at the size of the fucking hero blobs on the bottom of the foot pegs they're literally only just a little bit shorter than my legs like literally by a couple of centimeters they're just huge so it's obvious that this isn't a bike that is meant for uh carving apexes or, or taking on the track it's just a bike for riding around and looking cool and for that you don't need a bike with knife edge handling you just need something that's comfortable predictable and that you can still take to a certain level of performance without going too mad as I said earlier, it's just got the kind of the old school ABS system, which is non-switchable, non-cornering. It doesn't have traction control either, which I think is brilliant because it means when you do get on a bit of a dirty road like this, you can just pin the throttle and the back wheel just spins and spins and spins till you've got no rubber left on the tyre. It's really, really good. The only thing that I would say is if you were a new rider, would you want traction control just as a little safety net for you if you were riding through town or taking through going around a, a greasy roundabout that had been someone had pissed diesel all over the road yeah you probably would but that said the power delivery and the throttle connection uh of the bike are so good that you can't really you can't really whiskey throttle it in any way it's so progressive and it's so easy going and it's fueled perfectly you'd have to be an absolute bellend to lose the back end on it in the wet so i really like the dash on um this bike and yamaha have done the same with this as they did with the mto um, 9 sp and that it's got the reversed dash in that the dash is black and the uh all the numerals and all the all the information is in white and it's so easy to read it's just in any light i mean we're in a glorious bright sunny september late summer afternoon here and it doesn't matter whether you're under trees or you're in like the full glare of the sun or going under trees and out of trees you can always see the dash and it's the same at night as well um i think lcd dashes where you've got the white background or the light background and the black numbers they're, they're so difficult to read um i don't know why people don't sack them off altogether and just move to the the sort of system that this bike's got because it's got it's just perfect it's honestly it's the the one of the easiest to read dashes out there are the ones that yamaha do on the mto 9 sp and also um this bike in terms of uh equipment and what you've got within the dash you've got a couple of trip meters you've got air temperature you've got engine temperature you've got average mpg live mpg i don't think it's got range to empty but somebody in the comments will probably co uh, correct me on that um and an odometer as well you can flick through them all just the button on the left hand side of the dash and there's a reset button below it what more do you need is it worth 10 percent more than the standard xsr 700 i'm gonna say yes and there's good reason the noise the fact it looks so cool and the exclusivity of it you don't really see many xsr 700s on the road but when you do 
you're going to want to be on that one just to be different and i think it's just a a really really nice take on the retro theme and i love the way that they've uh carried over the xt500 decals and there's it's almost like a little bit of the xt500 sort of lives on through this bike even though the configuration of the engine and the size of the engine and also the what the bike is designed for is completely different i just think it's a really nice touch and uh i like that yamaha have done it and yeah, I'd like to see more of this, please, people, mo motorcycle manufacturers of the world. Make us a bit more stuff like this, because sports bikes are fun, but you just end up losing your license. And you can have fun on those below license losing speeds, give or take. I've been Toad. If you like what we've said, please let us know in the comments below. Click the notification bell and don't forget to like and subscribe. All right, guys. Cheers.